guys. Welcome to today's episode of Lottie's Lux. Let's get right to it. First lock, under 230 points, Toronto Raptors versus the Milwaukee Bucks. This is going to be an intense game. Milwaukee blew out Toronto last time they played. Now, Giannis didn't play and Kawhi didn't play, but that doesn't matter. The Raptors don't want to lose twice to Milwaukee. Plus, both teams are coming off a loss. Raptors lost to the Nets. Bucks lost to the Warriors. Okay, for games to stay under, we want shots deep in the shot clock. For that, we need teams with good transition defense. Well, Milwaukee is the best in the NBA at transition defense, and they actually give up fewer transition buckets on the road than they do at home. And as we saw the other day against Philly, Toronto isn't going to force up quick shots. They'll push the pace. They'll try to get a a good look early in the shot clock, but if nothing's there, they'll slow it down. And the Raptors are almost as good as the Bucks transition defense when they're at home. They give up just 11 points per game in transition when they play at home, while Milwaukee gives up 8.5 points per game in transition on the road, which is good for first in the NBA. They're also 6th and 7th in the NBA in defensive efficiency. This is going to have a playoff-like atmosphere. Both teams are going to be selective with the shots that they take. They'll do a good job of stopping each other in transition, which will force each team to take shots deep into the shot clock. Lock number one, under 230 points, Toronto Raptors versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, lock number two, San Antonio Spurs versus the Utah Jazz, over 218 points. The Spurs have had 10 straight games go over. Why? Because they're, be- they're solid offensively. They're ranked 10th in the NBA in offensive rating. And they're bad defensively. They're 29th in defensive rating. And it's not like Utah has been great defensively either. They're ranked 13th on the season. And of course, the two played the other day and it went way over this number with the Jazz winning 139 to 105. Now the Spurs should score a little more at home. The Jazz will probably score a little less. But you're already seeing the effect of Kyle Korver. He's exactly what the Jazz needed. Now, if teams want to double Donovan Mitchell, they have to leave open either Corver, Joe Ingles, Jay Crowder, all good three-point shooters. So Corver's presence has opened up more space for Mitchell and open shots for the capable three-point shooters on the Jazz. In other words, when Corver is on the court, opposing teams need to keep a defender on him at all times, and that creates opportunities for everybody else. And the stats back me up. The Jazz are averaging 119 points per game since Corver's arrival. This game is going way over 218 points. Okay, so those last points were a nice transition into my final lock today, Utah Jazz, minus four on the road in San Antonio. As I said earlier, averaging 119 points per game since acquiring Corver. They're three and one since acquiring Corver. They've blown out their last two opponents by an average of 29 points and Rudy Gobert didn't even play in their last game. He was ejected early in the first quarter when they steamrolled the Rockets. The Jazz win this one comfortably. Final lock today, Utah Jazz, minus four on the road in San Antonio. Good luck if you're placing any bets tonight. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Major key alert! I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.